Suppose I have a block and I am pulling this block around on the ground. And, and you may think, what is my motivation? Why am I pulling this block? What's important about the block? Why don't I pick the block up? Those questions will all be answered later by you. You can write a story. I'm just kidding. Okay, let's get to the physics though. So the question is, if I pull with a rope and the angle of the rope is 20 degrees above the horizontal and the block has a mass of 2.1 kilograms, the coefficient of static friction is 0.4, how hard do I need to pull it to move it at a constant velocity? So it, since the key word here is constant velocity. So if that's true, then I know that I could write this. F net equals zero. If it's moving at a constant velocity, the acceleration is zero, so the total forces have to add up to the zero vector. And remember, the zero vector looks like this. It has a zero x component, a zero y component, and a zero z component, newtons. If, if this is true, though, I actually can write two other equations, right? If, if the net force in the, the net force vector is zero, the zero vector, then this means the net force in the x direction is zero as a scalar equation, and the net force in the y direction as a scalar is equal to zero. And these are Newtons. So I, can, I get two equations. I get an, a net force in the x direction, a net force in the y direction. Uh, so let's start off by drawing a force diagram for this. So here's my, here's my mass. What forces are acting on that? Well, I, I have long range forces and I have contact forces. Uh, in this case, there's only one long range force and that's the gravitational force. So there's a downward gravitational force due to the interaction with this and the earth. And I'll write this as mg. And remember, g is a vector, g is a gravitational field. It has a value of zero, negative 9.8, zero, newtons per kilogram. On the surface of the Earth, if you take this problem and you do it on Mars, you're going to have to use a different value for g. If you go to uh, some other planet, if you go to the moon, which is not a planet, uh, you're going to have to use a different value of g. So other than that, I don't have any long-range forces acting on the objects. It's all contact forces. So what's touching the block? Well, there's really two things touching the block. There's this rope, and then there's the surface. Okay. So the surface actually can exert two forces. It can exert a force perpendicular to the surface, we call that the normal force, and I'll write it right here. And then it can exert a force parallel to the surface. In this case, that would be a frictional force. So since if I want to pull the block and slide it this way, which I didn't say, um, I mean, technically it could be moving that way, but it wouldn't be moving at a constant speed. Then the frictional force would want to oppose the relative motion between these two surfaces, so it would be pushing back this way. And I'll just call this F, F for friction. And then finally, I have the tension force. Uh, the, the wonderful thing about strings, I was looking for a string. Well, here's the earphone cable. Uh, the wonderful thing about uh, strings is they only pull. And they can only pull in the direction of the string. I can't, if I try to do another direction, the string changes. And I can't push with it. Okay, so that's important to know. So uh, I have this tension, T, and I, and I don't know that, but I do know this angle, this is called that theta. So that's my free body diagram, that's my force diagram. I have four forces acting on it. I have the gravitational force, I have the backwards pushing friction force, I have the normal force, and I have the tension. And I want to find the magnitude of this force. Okay. So let's just start off by saying I, I, I can't find the forces in the x in the y direction unless I know which direction the x and the y direction are. And so you may say, hey, let's just do x is like this and y is like that. And I'm like, that's cool, okay? Because it doesn't, that works in this case, but there are a lot of cases where you would, might want to change that. In general, you want either the x or the y in the direction of the acceleration. The acceleration is the zero vector, so it doesn't matter here. Okay, so let's look at f net x. So what forces act in the x direction? Well, I have this friction force right here in the x direction. So what's the x component of this friction force? Well, it's in the negative x direction, so I'm going to write negative f, f. It's not a vector. This is the x component of the friction force. Uh, normal force is not in the x direction. The gravitational force is not in the x direction. Part of the tension force is, though. So if you look at this, this is Tx. And this is T, 
y and I make a right triangle. So since that's a right triangle, I can say the uh, cosine of theta is going to be tx over the magnitude of t, which I'll just call t. Uh, so the x component is going to be equal to t cosine theta, and that's equal to zero. So right there, you can see I have I know theta, and then that has t in there. I I could could I use this to solve for the the tension? And the answer is no, because I actually don't know the frictional force, right? If I knew this value, then I could, but I don't. Okay, let's go ahead and write this, do the same thing in the y direction, f net y. That's a y. And this is going to be equal to what force are in the y direction? Well, the friction's not in the y direction. The normal force is, and it's pointing completely in the y direction, so its y component is just going to be in. There's a part of the tension force in the y direction, and it's this, y, this side right here. That's the opposite side of this right triangle. So I can write this as plus t sine theta. Remember, theta sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be ty. Be very careful. In this case, sine gives you the y component, but that's not always the case. You've got to look at the diagram. Also, I'm looking here, and I see that the y component of t is positive. It's in the positive direction, so I'm going to make sure that's positive. And then finally, I have the, ground, the downward gravitational force, and I'll just write that as negative mg. Now, g is the magnitude of the gravitational field, so g is 9.8, right? I've already taken it newtons per kilogram. I've already taken into account the negative nature of it. Okay. Now, I'd like to point out something right, really important here. If n was equal to mg, then this whole thing would be zero, right? So this n is not equal to mg. Not. Not. Nope. Nope. Just to be clear. So there's a lot of problems that you do where n turns out to be equal to mg. But there's a lot of problems it's not. Okay, so don't just say, oh, n is equal to mg, done. I made that mistake when I was a student. I remember making that mistake. Okay, so that's not true. Um, okay, so here I have another equation, though. So in this equation, in these two equations, I don't know the friction force. I don't know tension. I don't know the normal force. I don't know tension. So how many variables is that? That's three. That's three variables. Okay, so I can't solve three, three variables with two equations. I need a second, a third equation. So I have one. F, F equals mu K N. This is the model for the frictional force. The magnitude of the friction force is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. This is true for kinetic friction. For static friction, it's actually less than or equal to, and it has a static friction force there. So, but now I, I can substitute this in up here, and I get uh, this equation becomes negative mu k. That is the Greek letter mu. It's not a u. It's a mu. It's fun to say. Uh, n plus t cosine theta equals zero. But look what I have now. N, t, I know everything else. N, t, I know everything else. So now I have two equations, two unknowns, and I can indeed solve that. So let's uh, solve this one. Let's solve this one for n. What do you think? It doesn't matter which way you do it. Don't try to add these two together and hope that everything works out for the best because that's not going to work. Uh, I am going to, hmm, I'm going to solve this one for n. So I'm going to add mu k n to both sides of this equation and I get t cosine theta equals mu k in. Right, I added that to this side and it canceled. I added it to this side, it has a zero, so I get that over there. Now I can divide both sides by mu k and I get, I'm running out of room, I'm going to move to a new piece of paper, n equals t cosine theta over mu k. And remember, theta is a number, I know that. Mu k is a number, I know that. And, and if you put those numbers in right now, that's fine. But I like to leave it this way so that I can solve all of the problems and then put the numbers at the end. So that way it will work for any particular solution. So now I have a, an expression for n, and, it, and I don't want to put it in this equation because I'll, I'll get 1 equals 1. I'm going to put it in up there. So instead of n, I'm going to write this. So let's rewrite that equation. Oh, 
Oh, I, okay. So I get uh, T cosine theta over mu k, that was my n, plus T sine theta minus mg equals zero. Now what all I want to do here, I want to solve this for tension. So I have two terms with tension in it, so the best thing to do is to factor that out. So I'm going to uh, factor this out so I get T times cosine theta over mu k plus sine theta minus mg equals zero. Now I'm going to add mg to both sides and I get T cosine theta over mu k plus sine theta mg negative mg plus mg is zero so that cancels but then I have a plus mg over here. Now I want to solve for T so I need to divide both sides of the equation by this term and I get T equals mg all of that over cosine theta over mu k plus sine theta. Now you say, oh, well, isn't there some cool trig identity you can do here? There might be, but who cares about that? Uh, and so now I can put in my numbers. Let's put in the mass was 2.1. I'm going to leave off the units. G is 9.8. Uh, then I have cosine of 20 divided by mu k was 0.4 plus sine of 20. Okay, let's do that in a calculator. Uh, I, I don't normally like calculators, but let's do it anyway. So here's my calculator, uh, nice, cheap, inexpensive one, clear. Uh, so, you know, you gotta learn how to use your calculator, make sure you use it correctly. So I'm gonna say, and I, I'm not really good at this, okay. So I'm gonna say 2.1 times 9.8. You know, in the old days, I'd press enter, and then I would write that number down, but this is not the old days divided by parentheses cosine, I don't even know if I'm in degrees, I'm in degrees, so it's right there, cosine 20 divided by 0.4 plus, now you see here, uh, the rules are division before addition, so this actually will divide before it adds that, sine 20 Did I? Okay, I got that. 20, and then I need to close parentheses for that right there. I think that's it. And let's press enter. And I get 7.65. Okay, let's just really quick check. Okay, uh, let's let's find the, the y component of this because the y component of this just as a check has to be less than the gravitational force. So mg is going to be equal to 2.1 times 9.8 and that's going to be you know 20 around 20 let's see so 2.1 times 9.8 equals 20.58 20 oh, so that's definitely less than that Right, I don't even have to calculate that. The y component is going to be the y. If this has a x component of 7.65, the y component is going to be less than that for sure. Um, I'm kind of surprised that the force is so small, and I feel like I might have made an error entering in the numbers. I think the numbers are here pretty good. Um, just, just as an interesting thing, you could think about. Okay, what if I took my block and I'm pulling it like that at some angle theta. Would it be easier to pull it at an angle or would it be easier to pull it straight? And the answer is it depends, right? Because if there's a frictional force and I pull up at an angle, then what happens is that I reduce this normal force. If I pull straight, the normal force is equal to the gravitational force, and you're going to get the maximum amount of friction, so you're going to have to pull harder. If I pull up at an angle, I reduce the normal force and I reduce the friction. However, now I'm pulling uh, in a such that all of the forces counteract the frictional force. So the, the question is, is there an angle that um, is the best? the best angle. Uh, 
And so you could just try playing this out with the things. I, I don't want to answer the question for you right now because it's such a great question. Um, but um, I think I'll do that in another video.